On April 11, 1992, in a suburb of Tulsa, Oklahoma, 15-year-old Brad Kay had planned to spend the afternoon with his usual group of close friends who lived in the neighborhood. He and his father, Tom, got along well, but Tom had no idea of the tragic risks his only son was taking. Brad was all-American boy. He was adventuresome, intelligent, inquisitive. He was sometimes mischievous. He'd walk into a room and in a matter of minutes he'd have the whole place in uproar. I remember him riding up the street like he always did. What's going on? Not much. He was my best friend. He was like my little brother. Rodney Price, whom Brad had known since he was five, lived less than a block away. When we were all bored, he would usually find something to do or he'd say something, a joke or something. He was, he was hilarious. He'd make everybody laugh. <laughs> Another close friend, Aaron Albrecht, was also over at Rodney's that day. We were talking. Someone had mentioned butane, so we decided to go up to the store. Me, Brad, and another friend. See you later. Rough and it was kind of like a fad. Everybody at school was doing it. Brad, he, he loved it because it, he made him feel like he was invincible or different or something. I mean, and I felt the same thing. I liked it too. I did it every once in a while, but it was, I did it enough to where I really shouldn't have, but I never thought it would hurt me. All right, let's talk it, fellas. We drove around for about an hour or an hour and a half, and we kept on inhaling butane. Brad did about a whole can, but he was being normal as far as I could tell. You know, I didn't see anything different besides him laughing all the time. We came back here. Brad was walking in front of me. Come on, Brad. I said, come on, get up. Brad. He wouldn't get up. I didn't know Brad. what was going on. I was, Rodney. My heart was racing. I Rodney. was freaking out. Oh, God. Brad. 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 The way he was on the ground looked like, hey. I mean, there was something really wrong. Off. He wasn't breathing. Okay. Come on, Brad. Get my mom! Get up. Oh, I was scared to death. Rhonda Brown, a registered nurse, was at home two doors up the street. And I heard the kids screaming. And I thought, great, somebody's fighting. And so I looked up over the fence, and I could see Brad laying on the ground. Brad was my favorite out of the whole neighborhood, and everybody knew it. So to see this kid lying on the ground, it was very hard. Brad! He was making a sound where you could tell no air was moving in his lungs. A car pulled up at that point, and a man came out of the car, and he said, I know CPR. He checked for a pulse. He said he doesn't have a pulse. One and two and three and four and breathe. I was screaming at him, come on, Brad, come on. Breathe. At that point... I was all nurse. One of the kids had run to get Brad's father, Tom Kay. I didn't know whether he had, had an accident, somebody had shot him. I couldn't understand why my son was on the ground not breathing. I couldn't comprehend what was going on. Come on, Brad. He only responded to me one time, and he looked straight at me, and he went and took a full breath. Come on, that's it. That was the only breath he took that was effective. And that's where it dawned on me, you know, we may lose this kid. Rescue units with the Broken Arrow Fire Department arrived within five minutes, including EMT Paul Thompson. The way the neighborhood was responding, you could tell that this young man was important to a lot of people. It was obvious that he was starving for oxygen. And then when I realized that Brad was in cardiac arrest, I put my pads on the chest of the patient. I, I hooked up my uh, defibrillator. Everybody stand back, get back. I didn't want to see anymore. I mean, the way everybody was acting, the way it seemed, it seemed like Brad wasn't going to make it. So I just left. I just started walking down the street, and I was, I was crying so hard I could barely see. Shock's being advised. Count of three. One, two, three. Shock is delivered. 
Okay, we're checking for pulse. The first shock, it had no effect on the patient at all. One, and so two, uh, I shocked him again. And then after the second shock, I checked for pulse. I did have a pulse. Keep breathing, Jeff. Doing good. One, two, three. Keep that airway. We're all taught if you get somebody quickly, you can save their life. Brad no more than hit the ground than somebody who was by his side. So I really had a lot of hope that things would turn out. You always grasp for hope. He was 15. He had a good, strong heart. He had good, strong organs. And so I kept thinking, get this kid to a hospital and get him on a vent and he's going to be fine. Brad Kay was taken to St. Francis Hospital, where he was examined by pediatric intensive care specialist, Dr. Michael Stoiko. Not an epi drip. He unfortunately was minimally responsive. By filling the lungs with butane, the lungs no longer had oxygen, and the oxygen levels in his blood dropped rapidly. Okay. That's clear. But you could look at his face and you could see a, a beautiful, vital young man there who did something intentionally, who was now laying there helpless. Uh, everybody was just very, very depressed, knowing that this could have been prevented. All Tom and Jan Kay could do was wait for word of their son's condition. One of the police officers came up to me and said, your son was huffing butane. And I said, what's that? He said, well, that's where they inhale the butane out of the can. And I thought, oh, Lord. And I couldn't believe that Brad would choose to do something like this. You just keep hoping that this is not really happening, and it didn't seem real. It seemed like it was, this was happening to someone else. He's not opening his eyes. He's not moving around. And that's very worrisome that uh, his brain may be very seriously injured. The initial prognosis that I told the parents was that he, he was very unlikely to survive. That would make sense. At that point, our hearts just sunk. Absolutely sunk. You'll see the little pad on his chest here. What that's doing now... There was just no change in Brad at all. It, from the first time that I saw him to the last time that I saw him. So it's, it's, but, been, a rough, it's been a rough road here for the last hour. You know, miracles happen every day, and I thought, why can't one happen for us? Mr. and Mrs. K. Oh. 5.30, they came in and they said Brad's Brad was failing. We need to go in and be with if you want to say something to your son, okay. now's the time. So we went in there and spent the last moments with him, and uh, we held his hand as he slipped away. There was nothing we could do. At 6.01 a.m., less than 11 hours after he collapsed from inhaling butane, 15-year-old Brad Kay was pronounced dead. The lesson I would love to have people learn is that contrary to what their peers may be telling them, these types of drugs are very dangerous. You are essentially playing Russian roulette. The tragedy here is one of ignorance. There are probably thousands of children out there who are inhaling these various chemicals and probably as we speak one of them is dying. I still have a picture in my wallet of him, just to remind me. I don't want to forget about him. If Brad never died, I'd probably still be huffing right now. But that right there is something that'll, that'll just kill you. I mean, it, even though it didn't, I'm not dead, I mean, it seems like some part of me's dead because Brad died. It seems like part of me's missing. I always knew teenagers weren't invincible, even though they think they are. It's sad that it took him for everybody to learn a lesson. I miss him. If I could do anything to bring him back, I would.
It'll be a very long time for both Jan and I to recover totally, and we probably never will. We'll always hold a very, very special part of Brad in our hearts. See a boy Brad's age, and you wonder, I wonder what Brad would have grown up to be. He had a lot of opportunity. And Brad's not going to be able to fulfill those opportunities at this point, because he made a, a terrible, terrible mistake.